Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. So many times I hear from my connections, people I know that they want to write a book, whether it be fiction, nonfiction, whatever it may be, they're not really sure how to do it. They have ideas, or maybe it's a book about their life's work or whatever the case may be, but they're not even sure where to go. I've got your go-to. She's right here, and she can walk you through the entire process from editing, proofreading, everything that's involved, even right up to the point of getting it published and printed. She can assist you with that. And she's with us today from Hen House Publishing. It is Karen Smith. Welcome. How are you? Well, I'm great. Thank you. And I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, this is very interesting. This is, I've never met anybody that does what you do. You know, I've, I've talked to ghost writers. That's not what you do. You are somebody that <laughs> helps somebody along the way, like kind of holds their hand through the, through the writing process, but they are doing the writing, correct? Not always. Okay. I actually, I actually, I actually do ghostwrite for people, but most of my projects don't start out that way. Most of, mostly when I get a new project, the, the manuscript is already written. They just need that. They just need it to be refined. Okay, so they've written it and you tweak it, but to what level do you you take care of the content? Um, well, when it comes to editing, um, I get a whole range that cross my desk. Some of the manuscripts are very rough. Um, I mean, really, really rough. And like, uh, like I'm getting a visual right now, Karen. <laughs> like, like with somebody doing speech to text. Here it is. Do something with it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Mm. You know, things like that, you know, first draft, uh, first draft quality. Um, and some of the manuscripts I get are really, they're really clean. They're well-written and they're clean and they just need a, some minor tweaking. Um, so the kind of editing I do depends entirely on two things, which is what the author wants and what the manuscript needs. And are we talking just fiction or can it be nonfiction as well? I do a lot of nonfiction. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Uh, most of the nonfiction I do uh, is on basically memoirs, that type of stuff. Um, I've done some motivational, inspirational type of work. Um, so yeah, um, I, I will take on pretty much anything because my focus is not on the subject matter so much as it is working to improve the quality of the writing. I will not take on academic work because footnotes and citations just blow my mind. I can't deal with them. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a personal failing. <laughs> I, I don't blame you one bit. Plus you're dealing with very technical type stuff. And how do you know if it's accurate too? So, yeah. Yeah. And I don't do horror because um, it, it gives me nightmares. Okay. So I, you know, and anything that's really, you know, that, that falls under horror, you know, if Stephen King is your idol, that's wonderful. I don't want to see it. <laughs> it. <laughs> Everything has their thing. If if you gave me uh, uh, the manuscript about uh, phlebotomy, drawing blood, things like that, I'd hand it back to you. I don't want to, I don't want to go there. Not my thing. Not my thing. Um, everybody's different. So in terms of laying out a book, mm -hmm. that's part of what you do as well, right? Hmm. What what's involved in that? In in, in we call it page design. Yeah, I do, I do call it page design or page okay. layout, or book design. Um, which it's it's really odd in a way that I do this because most editors don't, and most writers don't. They don't have that background. Um, I come from a corporate background, and in those decades where I was working for those companies. The, uh, you know, the, the principals or the CEO would say, hey, Karen, you work in computers here, do our newsletter. <laughs> mm. So I kind of had to learn it on the fly. Um, so, you know, I learned and I took some seminars, uh, learned the software. And when I decided to go freelance, I figured I was going to take that skill on the road with me, too. So when it comes to page design, what. A lot of 
people don't understand is it is formatting your book, formatting your pages is more than just filling the page with words. What you see on the page directly affects the reader's experience. So spacing, uh, the spacing between lines, the spacing between the letters, um, that's all got to be taken into consideration. X height, which is, you know, the the style of the letter in which is like like on a lowercase b is that is 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 the curve of the b above or below the mid height of the letter so things like that do affect you know how the mm. content looks on the page um you get these uh, weird looks like little rivulets or streaks of white space that will go down the page and those are called rivers so wow. we work to adjust those. Now, why would they happen? I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and mm -hmm. you explained it great. I just, I see what's going on there. Is that just the way it formatted based on the copy that we had? It's just, it just happened that way. But now we have to it's fix just, it. It's just the way things fall into place. Okay. Uh -huh. How do you fix that though? If the, if the, the text is the text, how do you change the formatting of it? Are you going to change? Well, you the can you can board? adjust you you can adjust uh, you can adjust the uh, spacing between the characters, which is called kerning. You can make it wider or more narrow. The problem with doing that is sometimes you make it too wide and it just looks weird, and you make it too na too narrow and it's difficult to read. So you have to find sort of that that happy medium that works, but still manages to avoid things like widows and orphans, which again. Mm. <laughs> I know that that those little page design terms. <laughs> Rivers. I've cool. never heard that term, but as soon as you say it, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like I can see, you know, what's actually going on there. How interesting. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's page design is more than just putting the words on the page. It's making the words on the page readable. Got it. Hmm. Where did this all happen for you? Like, how did it all come about where Karen likes to lay out books? Were you an avid reader when you were younger? Like, tell us. I've journey. always been an avid reader. Um, I I learned page layout back starting in, I think it was 1990. I've been doing this for a little while. Wow. And um, I got a job in the marketing department of an, an architectural and engineering firm. And... That was my introduction to page design because I was doing their proposals. I did that for seven and a half years. And then I went to another company, which um, is now defunct. And I did, I did everything. I did brochures. I did catalogs. I did newsletters, um, anything and everything they could figure out that, you know, to, 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 to print came through me and they were kind enough to subsidize some of my uh, continuing education. And so I attended various seminars on uh, what they call, you know, desktop publishing and design and things like that. And uh, well, they also had me do their network administration, which was hey, Karen, you work on computers. So, you know, <laughs> it's like, guys, I, I have no interest in network administration. <laughs> But isn't it true that when that situation comes up, you're like, well, I want to look valuable. So, yeah, sure. I'll do that. I'll take that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, exactly. Um, and it, it was it was a you know, it was a do or die situation. You learn it and you keep your job or you don't learn it and they replace you. Hmm. So I learned it. Um, after that, I went into association management where I was for over a decade. And that a lot of people don't know what association management is, and that's perfectly fine. My, my family never understood what I did, um, but it involves a lot of documents, whether it's manuals, uh, event programs, and um, just different things, brochures, because you, you figure any professional association, you look at all the documents they have whether it's membership documents, advertising, uh, magazine articles, newsletters, I did it all. So mm. you know, once again, we keep you know working and practicing and refining what I've done. At the end of 2015, I lost my job 
And I mean, I mean the end of 2000, it was November 30th, 2015. I remember this very well. And by January of 2016, I absolutely dreaded the idea of going back into corporate. Uh, just it, it, it gave me, you know, gave me hives just to think about it. So I decided to go freelance. And I figured the skills I have are valuable. So I may as well build a new career doing that. And I have, and I haven't looked back. It's been great. Wow. What, what's your favorite thing to write? You know, Karen, let's, let's get away from, for, for just a moment of, of publishing and helping others. You can write whatever you want right now. And yeah, uh, people are going to see it. And <laughs> what's it going to be? Um, I write a lot of, um, I guess what's called now romanticy. Okay. Which is a combination of fantasy and romance. Hmm. Yeah. So you wow. Put the two, yeah. You put the two genres together and voila, you've got romanticy. Um, yeah. So I write a lot of that. Um, right now I am working on a Western. Westerns are great fun. <laughs> you said Western. Did I hear a that Western. right? Well, yeah, is it know. is it a is it a romantic western? No, no. Okay, nope. wow. Nope we've got uh, we we've got gunslingers and ranchers and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, you know, I growing up, I watched a lot of um, Clint Eastwood and John Wayne and Glenn Ford. You know, you know that that sort of stuff just sort of you know it sticks with me every every now and then. I still go back and. Oh, McClintock's on Netflix. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm into the same kind of stuff. Um, Yellowstone, loosely connected there. Ever watch it? I have not seen that. Okay. What about, I'll hit you up with another one. It was a favorite of mine. They weren't, there was maybe like seven seasons. It hasn't, a new one hasn't run in probably four or five years. Longmire? Loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. I watched I watched the entire series twice. Same. And, and I never I read the books. <laughs> I, I never watched something twice. Would you say books? Yeah, yeah. The Longmire series is based on a series a book series by Craig Johnson. Hmm. Um, except for a handful of key characters, um, the series the, the the Netflix series and the books are nothing alike. I, I, you know, now that you're saying it, now I'm remembering it uh, connected to books. And I'll tell you, the nicest people on cast, my daughter, who is now 16, but she was probably, I don't know, 11 at the time-ish, and yes. was yeah, loved the idea, watched the show, loved um, Vic, right? Yeah. The female lead. Mm -hmm. And it was her birthday. This was during COVID. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was during COVID. And I somehow reached out to that that woman and I just wanted to get an autograph or something. She, her mom replied because she was stuck in Canada because of COVID. And her mom said, you know what? Sell me 25 bucks. It goes to our charity that we've set up and um, I'll have her send something. The only thing was it wasn't personalized because she couldn't actually sign it because where she was, logistics, COVID. But do it. It's like the nicest thing. I was like, oh, how cool is that? Yeah, that was really yeah. nice. Yeah, there's nice people out there, you know, even though we think oh, they're yeah. in showbiz and they're like, you know, standoffish from the the audience. Wow, how interesting. So you are working on a Western. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do when you're finished with it? Um, I I was hired to write that Western, so the, the oh. my client will do whatever he wants with it. I did not know that. So why... Why would somebody hire you to write, let's say, a book like that? Well, it's 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 funny. Um, I edit for an off. I, I often edit for an author, uh, Russ Town, who writes westerns as well as children's books. Wow. And um, a few years ago, Russ said, "Hey, Karen, let's put it. Let's write a book together." And I said, it "Sounds like fun." And we talked about it, decided what we were going to do, because we have very different writing styles. And what we came up with was that we would each, we would put together a collection of short stories. So he wrote six stories. I wrote six stories. Uh, we combined them into the collection and published it. Wow. And it was like, you know, that was a lot of fun. 
<laughs> so I wrote, uh, I wrote more short stories. And hmm. when uh, I came across this comp, this 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 startup company, and they were looking for writers. And one of the genres that they were talking about was westerns. It's like, well, wow. I can help you out. So we talked, and I said, here, take a look at this. Um, one of my one of my western stories is available for free. You can just read it and see if you like the style. Not only did he do that, he also bought one of my books. And he hired me. Wow. We wrote, we, we wrote the first Western. Uh, it's titled The Bounty and published it early, early this year, I think it was. And um, I get my, my time's kind of relative to me a lot of times, but um, published it recently. And, um, wanted me to write a sequel. So that's what I'm working on now for him. So yeah, just, I want to just get this out of the way. So I learned mm -hmm. better about the process. Is he giving you the parameters for this Western, you know, here, you know, he might, maybe he might say totally hypothetical now. Okay. So we have a uh, stockbroker who has decided that he wants to go back to his roots as a, you know, Western type guy. And now he's in the Midwest. What is he giving you that those parameters to write this book? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It is um, cool. the, 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 the general plot line, the general, the, 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 the plot summary. He came up with that. It's up nice. to me to turn that into a novel length story. Gotcha. So I've wow. got a lot of creative latitude. In a way that's kind of cool because it's already been defined. You're getting compensated for it. You're just, I guess, filling in the blanks. You know, he's giving you this, 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 this. Now you're weaving a story into that. But of course, along with that editing, proofreading, um, getting it ready for print. Um, actually, he's he's um, I, I don't I don't edit and proofread the work I do. OK, as far as, as far, I, I, well, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say that I do self edit. But when he when we're finished with the manuscript, he doesn't send it back to me for editing because editing your own work is stupid. Because, you know, you're too close to the story. You can't see that. You can't see the mistakes. You know, it makes perfect um, sense. I didn't think of yeah. it that way. Yeah. You're too close to it. Absolutely. And um, I don't know of a single editor who recommends editing your own work, you know, as a final step, as 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 part of the prop, as as a later part of the process. When you're writing it and you're refining it and you're revising it. Yes, you do that because, you know, that helps the quality of the, of the writing, the story. Sure. But once you once you've got it as good as you can get it by yourself, then it needs to go to an editor who has that objective bird's eye view of it. And I guess in, in many fields, it's, it's good to critique your own work. That's how you grow. Sometimes we're our own worst critic, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, you know, if it's a typo, if it's a punctuation, whatever it might be, you did it. You might, uh, you might not see it again and again. So yeah, that does make perfect yeah, sense. And not, not only that, but I, I come across, um, I, I recently proofread a manuscript for a client. And it had been through an editor and the manuscript was uh, basically a beginner's guide to the tarot. And she had gone through it several times herself. It had been gone through a professional editor at least once. Mm -hmm. And they forgot one. And she had a list near, near the beginning of the manuscript. You know, these are the Zodiac signs. There were 11 Zodiac signs. It's like, well, aren't there supposed to be 12? Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I point, it's like, um, yeah, Leo goes here. So, <laughs> But again, you're so yeah. close to it, just probably missed right. it, missed it again. Exactly. Um, you, know, tell, it, you must learn so much, you know, when it's, when it's the uh, things that are nonfiction. I even with fiction, um, because I have to do a lot of research, even with mm. fiction. Um one of the things I I uh I did a manuscript critique uh for this very it, it's just an epic fantasy, uh very intricate storyline. Um 
And all through this story, the author had horses nibbling on mushrooms. And it's kind of like, I've, I own horses. I, it's like, this doesn't seem right, but I, I can't say I've ever seen a horse, a horse eat a mushroom, but I know horses will eat pretty much anything because they're simply curious about that sort of stuff. So rather than just go with my gut, I decided to look and do the research. And no, horses don't eat mushrooms. Wow. <laughs> so you know, even when, when I, I had a ghostwriting project, it was a science fiction project. And the author insisted that uh, I, I wrote in the I wrote in this thing that, you know, after a gunfight, that there was the smell of cordite in the air from the gunpowder. She says, no, they're not using gunpowder. And I said, then what is propelling the bullets down the barrels of these rifles? And she said, well, they're this sort of bullet. And it's like, okay, that doesn't tell me what kind of force is propelling the bullets down the rifle. So once again, I had to do a little research and we decided to just manufacture something uh, that would work. You know, um, there's, uh, I'm editing a manuscript right now, and there are some things that I've had to, that, that, that I guess sort of trigger, tr tr trigger the, 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 the warnings, you know, the warning bells in my mind. It's like, this isn't right. So I do the research and I, it's, if I can find something in five to 10 minutes of research and debunk it, then so can so can any other reader. Mm. So what that all goes into, you know, what it boils down to is that over the years of doing all of this research for and during editing and doing ghost writing, um, as I have, I know a lot, but it happens to be spread thin. So I know a little bit about a whole lot of stuff. You never know who's reading it. <laughs> you know, you could have a physics teacher and, you know, he could tell you, wait a minute, you know what? That bullet can't be propelled by 80,000 pounds of PSI because that doesn't exist, whatever it might be. Right. Um, assisted publishing is something that you offer. Mm -hmm. uh, in the time that we have left for today, what exactly does that mean? What it means is um, I will take your story concept uh, basically from soup to nuts. If you don't have it written, I will write it for you. If it's already written, I will edit it for you. If you need it formatted for publishing, I will format it for you. Although I will put a caveat, I format for print. I do not do ebook formatting. I don't hire that out. Um, if you need a proofread, I will proofread it for you. And then if you need help uh, with the upload process, I will walk you through it, mm. but you've got to have the right file formats. Those files have to be correctly sized and um, configured. And I can do that. Wow. Um, so with that, you can help somebody, let's say if they want to send it up to Amazon, you know, for a Kindle or something like that, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. Is that the one of the best ways or easiest ways to get published? Amazon makes it very easy. Uh, they have their, 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 it's Kindle Direct Publishing is, is their system. And they lead you through it step by step. So if, hmm. it's, if something's out of whack, they send you an error message saying, hey, you need to resize to these specific dimensions. They they make it they they make it very very clear. Would you say would you say that that's what you? There's a lot of value in that because I wouldn't even know somebody I I know does audiobooks. He doesn't record them. He coaches you so you can record your own audiobook. But there's that's very cool. specific parameters involved in that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there would be. Um, I know nothing about audiobooks, but I'm sure there would be and. Being able, no, knowing that you don't know is really helpful when you're when, when you're doing something of this like this. Publishing a book, 
um, writing, writing the book is generally a solitary endeavor. Publishing it, to do it well, requires a team. And that gets expensive. So oftentimes uh, a self-published author will try to either do everything himself, which is never really a good idea. Um, I've made that mistake. I can say that with confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a good idea. <laughs> or hire just like one or two people to help, you know, to, to make that team. Wow. Uh, this is fascinating. I love this stuff. It's so cool. Um, I didn't even know you existed. I, I wouldn't even know what to Google to find a Karen Smith. So uh, tell me <laughs> well, how, I, how do Smith, I find Smith it? It's not hard to find. It's just hard to distinguish from among all the millions of other Smiths. Uh, which is uh, was my mom's uh, maiden name. So yeah, I, I got you on that. Yeah, well, it's my married name, Smith. Well, maybe we're related. <laughs> okay. Doubtful. Whoa. Doubtful. <laughs> so best way to find you, even to start with, even somebody having some questions about content or the whole process, how do we do that? If you have questions, um, I'm on Facebook, um, Hand House Publishing. So Hand Like Chicken, House Like House Publishing. Um, Handhousepublishing.com is my website. And I do have a contact page on there. You can send, shoot me questions. Facebook's good. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Shoot me, you know, shoot me a message there. And I guess um, my my contact information is really on on my social media, so my website. Wow, you know, even if somebody is let, let's let's say a professional like a doctor and wants to be published, they could write it, or even they could have somebody else write it for them and then send it to you to I call it polish it up, get it ready for print. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, Karen, great meeting you. Great talking with you. Uh, lots, lots to dig into. We're out of time, but Hen House Publishing. Next time, I'm going to find out what that actually means. <laughs> That's my mission next time. There's a story behind that. I'm, I'm sure. And uh, there's a lot of other things that we can share uh, next time we get together. Thanks for being here today. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Same. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.